Hey everybody, Derek Christensen here. I am an estate planning attorney who owns Legion Law, a premier estate planning and probate law firm in Dallas, Texas. Today I wanted to talk to you about burial plots and how they work and how to make sure you actually do it right the first time because it can be very costly if you don't. But before I dive into that, I wanted to let you know how to reach out to me. You can find me on my website, www.legionlawplc.com or you can go and email me directly, Derek, D-E-R-E-K at legionlawplc.com. So with that, let's dive into the fascinating world of death. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I say a glib, but it really is true. Uh, this is an industry more than anything. I actually have seen um, many, I don't know. I am of the belief that there are major life events in uh, life. You can get married, you can be born, you can die, you can have a lot of different things happen to you during that time frame. But those major events are, have entire industries built around them to profit and to capitalize on that. Now, whether or not you agree with that is a completely different story, but at the end of the day, there are concerns when it comes to the death industry that people capitalize on and take advantage of people because they pass away. And it's a guarantee that we're all gonna pass away, so technically everybody can be a client. So to make the most money, burial I've seen burial homes charge very, very high fees and a lot of money for burial plots. Now, People oftentimes are making the decision between cremation versus burial, and uh, I may or may not convince you to get cremated after this video because there have been a lot of different instances where I've worked with clients who had negative experiences with funeral homes. More specifically, these burial plots of land are very, very expensive. Um, and I, this is not a video bashing burial homes. I apologize if this comes off that way, but uh, I, you just wanna make sure you do it right the first time. Um, and these are very expensive plots of land. In fact, if you think about it, you are literally buying that plot of land and you are keeping it for the rest of eternity. Uh, they can't resell a burial plot, uh, at least from what I understand. <laughs> um, but you are actually given a full-blown title to that land. You are treated as if you're buying a house, kind of, where you buy the land and it's actually yours. Um, so, that being the case, you're gonna get a formal title and you wanna make sure that title is in the correct name. Now, oftentimes, family will go out and buy titles for their loved ones. So uh, I'm worried about my mom and dad, so I'll go buy a mom and a dad plot of land right next to each other so that they can be buried together if they want that. Um, this is an example, by the way. I don't know what my parents actually want. <laughs> I probably should find out. But um, at the end of the day, that's, you know, if I did that, I would buy two plots of land and it'd be, you know, row three, uh, section two, plot eight and nine you know, and there would be two titles to both of those plots of land and they would be officially mine because I'm the one who bought it. But if you haven't been able to figure it out yet, buying a plot of land in my name is different because it's in my name and not my parents' name. So it needs to be in my parents' names in order for them to be able to, or for their estate to go to that funeral home and say, we have these plots of land, we would like to be buried there. Um, but if you don't have that title in their name, then there is a possibility that I could die before my parents and then they can't access those plots of land because it's in my name and not theirs. So if, if they die before me and I'm, I survive them, then I can just gift them. I can say, hey, I've got these two plots, but it's okay, just go ahead and use it that way. Uh, so that's totally fine. But but the prob the possibility of me passing away before my parents is the issue here because if I die before my parents, then we have to resolve my estate and figure out everything on my end before we can give that to the to the parents. So either way, what I'm trying to say is that when you buy plots of land, if you're trying to buy it for someone else, try to put it in their name. Ask the funeral home if they let you do that. If they do let you do that, do it because that person who's gonna be in the ground needs to be on that title or the person who owns the title needs to be alive to give permission for that to happen. There's, again, a very strong probability that you could just be dead before everyone else, and therefore your plots of land can only go for you, and I'm only one body. I can't take up two plots of land. So that's my thought on that. Um, if you have any questions on that, if you're concerned about burial plots of land, uh, you gotta make sure you realize it is an actual piece of land that you are actually buying. It's not just some like rental situation or something like that. So you gotta treat it with pretty strong um, you know, seriousness because 
uh, the wrong situation could lead to very dire consequences. And the last thing you want to deal with at your funeral or at the funeral of a loved one is to say, we have no idea where we can bury this person or we need to go buy yet another piece of land for this person because the first one got messed up. So if that's the case, if you're concerned, feel free to reach out. I could be a resource. I'd be more than happy to chat. Uh, you can find me in my email, Derek, D-E-R-E-K, at legionlawpllc.com, or you can go to my website where you can go onto our Contact Us page, schedule a free consultation over the phone directly onto my calendar at www.legionlawpllc.com. So thank you so much and have a great day.